can see that boy out there, it's just right out there now, it's about 150, 160 yards. Now Gavin's going to clear that boy now, without a doubt, because he's got the right equipment. So, I've given, we'll give, we're starting on his first light rod, and then we're going to go on a heavy rod. A little surprise for him. You ready Gav? Right, so come on Gav, talk me through. What rod have you got there mate? I've got the 12 foot um, 3 pound test curve long range Berkeley B2. Yeah. Um, just a basic rod, it's just got the 40 mil butt ring. Um, and I've coupled that up with a Dower uh, emblem S. Let's have a look at that reel. Your basic Dower emblem. I don't really think when you're fishing at range and you're using lighter diameter, uh, you know, smaller diameter line, I don't think you need the massive long tapered spools. You can get away with, you know, your average size reel. Still, with, like we've explained, with a tapered leader. Right, yo. Um, so, what lead have you got on now, Gav? This particular one, I've only got a three. It being a three pound test curve rod, I don't want to overdo it. Let's have a look at the lead. It's a three ounce uh, distance lead. Nice. What's that you got on your finger, Gav? What uh, is it? Personally, I prefer these chub finger stalls. It's like a, it's like a nice flexible leathery material with a, a strap around the wrist, so it's pulling tight on your your finger. The last thing you want is it to flap about and catch your line on the cast. That's very nice, that mate. It's a clever. That. What company uses that? What? Chub. Oh, that a chub one is it? About a fiver. About a fiver. Yeah, it just stops the you know the mono or the braid digging into your finger. So it's a safety aspect. Basically, yeah. So would you say, Gav, when you're doing any sort of long range fishing, you need one of those finger yeah, stalls? Yeah, I'd recommend it because there's a lot of pressure on your f your finger, you know, on the, the line digging into your finger on the cast. So. Right, okay then, let's just, let's just go through like your foot position now, Gav. How, how, how do you have your feet? Well, I'm right handed, so I put my left leg forward. Not, you know, not like this, sort of just comfortable. And About then, a foot apart and yeah, when you, how you feel comfortable. Two apart. Um, point the left leg where I'm actually going to be casting to, and then this one I just you know the right the, leg. Yeah, you just put that at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, do you? basically, yeah, just uh, to yeah. cope with the weight transfer. It's weight transfer. Now, what's this weight transfer? Um, well, what I'd like to do is when you're going for the cast, your weight because you're going back with the rod, the weight is on at the on the back foot. So as you come back, the weight's at the back, and as you transfer the that go for the cast, you're transferring the weight onto the left leg. So you're going from, the arm action is basically this, and then the weight, you're coming from here, I cast like a pendulum, so I come back, weight's at the back, whack it forward, and the weight's going from the back leg to the front leg, basically, you know. Yeah, that's fine that, Gav. Um, just another little tip. What I, what I find as well, every time you do a big chuck, Gav, what's important to do after each cast? Uh, always check the spigot. Um, last thing you want is it for coming loose and then you go and give it the big and then it uh, slides up where it's not meant to be and just, you know, the chance of it smashing or flying off into the lake. Yeah. So, and obviously you're checking behind. So, you know, so yeah, it's 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 route. quite relevant. I think we should yeah. point this out. Not Actually, we like should we make this very really essential, Gav. To the left of your arm, what do you need? A rod length? Uh, well, yeah, in a way, to be safe, but not necessarily because everything's happening overhead. Yeah. So as long as you've not got anything above you, and anything for your rig to catch on behind, not everywhere is going to have this sort of room. You could be on a, you know, in. in Wood somewhere in a so you, bearing, so you, so something. basically before you go for the big cast, Gav, yeah. you put the rod tip right up. Right up. Yeah, check that aiming, there's not on there. Aiming what? Yeah, aiming for what? To my marker. So I'm aiming parallel with my foot and my arms where I'm aiming. And as I come back, the weight's on the back foot, and I'm flicking forward. And then when the light, the rods come back to its uh, position, hold it at four, you know, basically 45 degree angle, and it's following the line going off where the lead's going. I mean, if, you know, you, you can cast and hold your rod up here, well that's not doing anything because of the friction in the tip, it's struggling. And the same with it being down here because the lead's going up. What you want to do is, after you've done your cast, when the rod's settled, you want to be holding it where the lead's going, so the, it's, the line's following it, basically. And there's that boy there, out there. 
So that's with the three pound test cave rod. So go on then, give us give us one more big hey ho. Well, should I attach the rig? Go on then, you're gonna to attach to your rig. Oh, we that with that. What, what was that swivel call again, Gav? The covert, covert. Gardner covert oh, quick change link. Oh, I like that, Gav. Never lost a fish on that then, though. No? no, never. Hundred percent confident in all this. So we slide the tail rubber over the swivel. Right, home. Right. Make sure that leader knot's at the bottom of the spool. So where's that boy right out there? 160 the yards. With a rig on this time. See if we can get the splash. Check the spigot again, make sure it's not slipped. And we'll go for it. There we go, it's the clip. So right, I don't know if I've got that light, but it's basically the same distance that hit the clip anyway. It's right, Cav. So that's ten pound pro clear with a Daiwa tapered leader, three ounce lead on a three pound test curve rod. Slightly stiffer rod if you're on a big open space because um, if there's a big crosswind, it does help. Uh, with a stiffer rod, you can up the, the lead size from like my preference is a three and a half, but you could up it to a four, maybe a four and a half, just to cut through that wind. It makes it less effort, basically. Oh, you mean like the rod that we've got here now? I believe you brought me a little toy, yeah. I brought you a new little toy to play with, mate, yeah. This rod was built up by Nick Bus. By, um, basically, I talked through it with Nick what I wanted, what I required. Um, he set the rings up for me. Um, and, and sit in position and, and also he's giving me a nice blank gav. It's 13 foot, three and a half pound test cave. What do you think of that? Beast. With a four ounce lead on. Are you yeah. happy to use that mate? Is, yeah, is, is, is that going to be not too could, big for the chuck head? Like, no, is I it? think I can handle that. You think you could handle it? <laughs> Come on and let's get this rod out. Oh, she's a big one isn't she? 50 mils. 50 mils, let's just have a look at these eyes. The eye settings here. What's a 50 mil ring? There's 30, the next mil, a 40. 30. 30. 20. 20. I believe that next one looks like an 18 and a 16 mil tip. And a 16 mil tip. And, we and it's 13 this. foot, and it's three and a half pound test cave. So it's an extra foot longer. And Half a test curve stronger. We've still got the Daiwa emblem. What about so this leader knot, mate? Where do you like putting your leader knot? Well, like I explained it, I like the leader knot to be at the bottom of the spool. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah. At the bottom. At the bottom of the spool. I mean, nowadays a lot of the reels have got slow oscillation, so you, you know, if it's at the, it doesn't have to be at the very bottom because there's a lot of turns as it goes up. But if reels like this tend to have the knot at the very bottom line so on the cast nothing's coming past the knot right yo so basically gavin um we've gone for a four ounce lead now haven't yeah, we four ounce lead and you're going to give it some now aren't you yeah without, so this is without a rig obviously all, always i recommend to clip up without a rig on just in case any accidents right you, you know you don't want to be sending live rigs out in the lake so you're better clipping up having a few casts towards the float without a rig on first just to get that confidence and you know consistency of it in that range so we'll right give, this a, give this a bit of a whack then see if we can get the boy back in again <laughs> 